internet and cell phone signals won't be the only things that are wireless. We're only a few years away from being able to use wireless electricity to recharge and power all sorts of devices. When you think of electricity traveling through the air, you might imagine Benjamin Franklin flying his kite. Early experiments with wireless electricity weren't always very different from that. The first inventor who really developed wireless electricity was Nikola Tesla. Tesla developed transformers he called Tesla coils. They used multiple inductors that both vibrated at the same frequency and were magnetically linked. These inductors were grounded in the earth. Because of the way Tesla structured the coils, they were able to minimize the danger of operating with very high electric voltages. But Tesla had a hard time developing the best means of harnessing all of this energy, and the coils tended to produce noisy electric sparks. You may have seen this on your last visit to the Science Museum. The transformers inside a Tesla coil were able to work together thanks to resonance. To understand how resonance works, think of a trumpet. When you blow into one trumpet, another trumpet nearby is affected because the sound waves make both trumpets vibrate at the same frequency. Other objects, no matter how close, are not affected because they vibrate at different frequencies. Modern day wireless electricity technology, which is much safer than the Tesla coil, uses electromagnetic fields that work in much the same way as the two trumpets. It starts with a curved copper coil that acts as an inductor and has a capacitance plate attached to each end. These capacitance plates hold the electric charge. The coil resonates on a frequency determined by the inductance of the coil and the capacitance of the plates. Any coil can act as either a transmitter or a receiver. One transmitter coil can send electricity to several receiver coils, so long as they all resonate at the same frequency. Coils will send and receive electricity only when they need it. Electricity will travel between coils only when an appliance, like a television, is switched on. If a coil is recharging a battery, it will automatically stop once the device is fully charged. Wireless electricity uses the magnetic field between coils to transfer electricity in electromagnetic waves. Because they travel within the magnetic fields, the electromagnetic waves are not radiative. This makes them different from the waves in your microwave and even your cell phone. Magnetic fields are scientifically proven to interact so weakly with biological organisms that it is perfectly safe for people and animals to be in the path of the waves, even if they are actively sending electricity. Remember that the transmitters work thanks to resonance, and, just like the trumpets, will only transmit electricity to devices that vibrate at the exact same frequency. However, wireless electricity technology is not perfect. The transmitting and receiving coils need to be close enough together or no electricity will be transmitted. They also need to resonate at exactly the same frequency or, again, nothing will happen. Too many devices pulling too much power from only one transmitter will lessen the total amount of electricity available for all of the devices to receive. This is just like how you can't plug too many appliances into one outlet, or how too many users on a wireless network, or one user downloading really big files, will slow the whole network down. Plus, the inventors developing this technology have not yet figured out a way to keep track of how much electricity a coil is sending or receiving. This means that the wireless electricity coils are not currently compatible with the electric meters that power companies have traditionally used. All the same, there are lots of potential uses for wireless electricity. Nearly 3 billion batteries are used annually, and wireless electricity could easily eat into this market share. Any appliance that runs on electricity could eventually be run wirelessly. Each U.S. household 
uses 11,040 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. Wireless electricity could not only decrease this number due to increased efficiency, but it could streamline our lives. As devices become increasingly mobile, the implications of an equally mobile, more efficient power source are huge. Wireless electricity is able to penetrate most building materials, including glass, plastic, wood, and drywall. Additionally, the magnetic field is able to wrap around most metal objects. This allows wireless electricity to be installed in a variety of environments, where obstructions will not interrupt any transfer. The transfer is 90% efficient, since there are no wires, which produce resistance. The power source is able to sense when a battery or object is fully charged, which reduces the amount of electricity needed for the transfer. Because of this feature, users could see great cost savings after implementing wireless electricity. All of wireless electricity's features could have a great impact on how businesses are run. Let's look at retail stores first. Stores like Best Buy, the Apple Store, or IKEA run multiple appliances and electronic devices all at once. The entire store layout is built for shoppers who are able to try each electronic device and compare it to others carried at the store. Wireless electricity, of course, could totally change the way these retailers operate. Without wires, moving display models around the store becomes much easier. With more flexibility about where the power hub and power capture devices are located, stores will have more freedom to base their layouts on the patterns of shoppers. With wireless electricity, a row of laptop computers could be on a table in the middle of the store, and a transmitter could be attached to the bottom of the table. There are obviously an enormous array of potential uses for wireless electricity. Let's imagine what things could be like a few years from now if one company began implementing wireless electricity today. My name is Xiao Fei Lu. I'm a freelance technology consultant and I travel frequently between Boston and New York. For me, time is money. I need to be able to get work done when I'm on the road. With the Boston-New York trip, there isn't a big difference between flying and taking a train. Now Amtrak, Logan, and JetBlue all give you free Wi-Fi, so I know what I've got there. Ever since Amtrak started this new wireless electricity thing, it's made my life a lot easier. How long have you been using Amtrak's wireless electricity? Um, let me see. They first started offering Wi-Lag a couple of years ago. I've been reading about the technology, but I didn't get to travel on the train that offered it for a while. I used it on Amtrak a couple of months after they first introduced it. So you were following wireless electricity's development, reading about it? No, no, I wouldn't say I was following it, but you know, I'm a technology consultant. Um, there were a couple of companies associated with MIT that were developing wireless electricity that I saw on conferences. Uh, when Amtrak first rolled out WILAC, they were advertising everywhere. Um, on subway, in, in airport, Penn Station, South Station, so I knew that it would be available. What was it like the first time you used Amtrak's Wi-Lex? Well, I knew wireless electricity worked with batteries my device already had. I had heard horror stories on the train being totally out of transmitters when our Wi-Lex was first introduced, but luckily that wasn't the case for me. Uh, in my case, the guy at the cafe car had no idea what I was talking about when I told him I wanted to buy a wireless transmitter. And Amtrak had already been selling them for a couple of months. Well, I got one eventually, uh, and it was only about 20 bucks. So I fired up my laptop and I got on the Wi-Fi, and I could see that I only had about an hour's worth of power left. So, but I figured that at least I had to get started on some work, so I got lost in what I was doing. And somewhere in Connecticut, I came out of my daze and realized that my computer was fully charged. I had been able to work completely uninterrupted, uh, no annoying low power alerts, no digging in my back for the power cord, and, and then I started to realize just how big wildlife could be.